Hi folks, John Sansom here, and today I'm going to show you some of the methods that I use for retouching hair in beauty images. Now here we have an image that I shot for a beauty editorial recently, featuring our stunning model Natasha Minter, an incredible makeup created for us by Peter Simon Friedrich. I'll leave their details down in the description box below. I highly encourage you to go and have a look at their work, it's fantastic. The first thing that I think is always important to consider with hair retouching is a lot of us really don't like doing it. And it's simply because it's difficult, it can be quite involving, sometimes it's very hard to know how far to take it, when is it too much, and your aesthetic will improve the more you practice. When you're looking at this, keep in mind that this is just some of the methods that I use for hair retouching. There are a lot of different ways that you can go about doing this. It's about finding an approach to retouching that makes sense for you, so that you can feel comfortable. You're going to make mistakes, and that's absolutely fine. You've got to remember that the way that we approach things in our retouching in Photoshop is non-destructive. We're creating additional layers. If we make a mistake, just go back and do it again. Oftentimes I'll, I'll see people doing like using cloning and healing. They'll make a, a bodge of it and then they'll try and actually repair over that. It's much better to just go back and start again. All right, the image that we're seeing now is actually the finished view of the image. So this is where all the retouching has already been done. Now in a moment, what we'll do is we'll go back and we'll look at the raw import into Photoshop. The reason why I chose this image is it's a great candidate because it's got a lot of challenges, particularly with regards to hair. So if I turn off all the layers, showing all of the work, and this is the image as we started with. It's in a good place to begin with, right? It's lit correctly, it's got a good range of tones, and as you can see, I add another layer here just to assist us in, in highlighting some of the things that we can potentially want to look at today. So let's go for blue. So, you know, we've got a lot of the classic things up here on the forehead sort of area. We've got the classic flyaways here as well. This area down by the shoulder here is particularly frustrating, reason being because the hair actually is quite fine and it overlaps onto the fashion as well. So to get in there and clean that would be quite involving. And if we look on the, the top here as well, this hairline needs some cleaning. I think if we look at the actual in, intention of the image itself, it's obviously a messy hair look. So when we go about our cleaning, we don't actually want to eliminate absolutely everything we're not going for perfection here and i think that's the mistake a lot of people make is that you know all right fair enough if you're shooting an advertising campaign for pan 10 then you want to create that uber slick look but here it's more about leaning towards reality you'll definitely want to go in and actually clean up some of these uh flyaways for one of a better description that are embedded within the hair but the selection criteria that I will use for this type of thing is identifying components that are a distraction. Where is the eye drawn to in the image? And that philosophy is a good approach to have overall. You want to think about the target medium for your image as an end result. So if the work that you're retouching is going to end up on Instagram, then a lot of this really low level detail is just not going to be visible at that sort of resolution. So you really don't need to go crazy when you're retouching it. We'll definitely want to clean up some of the hairline up here and this on the cheek as well. Okay, so the first thing I want to tackle is this area on the top left up here, this set of flyaways. So let's uh, zoom in up there. And it's just this line. The thing, the, my approach to hair retouching is to break things down. You don't want to try and tackle everything in one go, break it down into a smaller set of problems and then work through these things one at a time. If I turn all of the cleaning layers back on, that's before and that's after. See, it's not drastic, it's really about just letting the original image, the quality that's there, really shine, just removing those distractions. But, I mean, you can look at the difference, the hairline here is, is a lot better. Now, one thing to consider about this particular image is the way that it's been shot, the depth of field, the entire image is not in complete focus from front to back. It is not tack sharp. And the way that you can see this is if you look across the hairline, you'll see that it starts very sharp and detailed here alongside the face. But as you move along the image, it becomes a little bit softer and blurrier. And that's because of the depth of field on the image. 
This becomes important when working on the hairline because you want the edge to actually be soft, to not be very perfect and sharp. So I'm gonna turn off all of our cleaning layers apart from this left side. So you can see the before and after. And we used a combination of techniques to get us to this point. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna repeat this process so that you can see exactly how it's achieved. So the first thing we need to do is to create ourselves a new layer. And we'll just call this hair demo. And now the, the challenge here is what you could do is you could actually go in and use something like the healing brush and remove these things one at a time. But you know, we haven't got all day. Retouching is about efficiency. First thing we want to do is to select our clone stamp tool. And what we're gonna do is completely take out this area along here with all the flyaways and replace it with our background color. So we want to sample close, we're using a flow of 20% soft clone brush. I'm just going to go in and create that edge. Now, using quite a large brush, obviously we're going into the body of the hair itself, but that's not a problem, don't freak out. We're going to come back in a second and we're going to use a mask to control just how much we remove and how much we decide to keep. But the goal here is just to create a nice starting point for us, creating a new edge along the hairline. Let's come in here, let's really get in there. It's a bit at the top here. Okay. Good, and if in doubt, go further than you actually need to. Remember, you're gonna mask this in and out so you can give yourself that room to maneuver afterwards. Now one note on the background here is this background is actually quite a nice color. If your background has a gradient, just pay more attention to where you're sampling from. And I think I'm about happy with that. So the next thing to do is to add a layer mask and then invert that mask. Select a white brush, quite a high flow and start painting in our new hairline. What shape bloody dynamics on I think. Yep, get rid of that. Bugger off. Let's see I'm being quite quick here defining that new hairline. It's a mask, we can always come back and change it afterwards, but just giving a rough idea of where we want this new hairline to be. It doesn't need to be perfect. And I think I'm quite happy with that. I mean, even if you just look at the before and after, and you kind of zoom out, <laughs> like if you think if this is just going on Instagram, some people might be happy with that and you can probably get away with it, but we're not. So we're gonna come in here and just tidy this up a bit. So change the hardness, sorry, the softness on our brush down to 20% now. We'll start just feathering this edge in a little bit. Just defining where we want that to to start and finish. Whoops, a little bit too much there. As you can see, it's starting to take shape nicely. Let's tidy this up in here. Come in, actually. 
go to that. You don't want this to be absolutely perfect. Maybe you want to try and keep some of that you know, the hairline to look natural. And one advanced technique you can actually do is if you really want to go to town on this, you can actually start painting hairs in along this edge here. That's looking pretty good. All right, now just to tidy things up a little bit, what I'm gonna do is actually add some additional hair here. So if I just clone stamp close to the area and just gently brush in there, just to fill out the hair slightly here. Get rid of this. Just down here as well, just fill out that body a little bit more. happy with that and what I might do is as a future step I may come in and actually use liquify and just push this edge in and you can spend as much time as you want really refining this edge you get the idea tidy that up there And there you have it. Let's turn all of our cleaning layers back on again. And that's our final image. So I'm not happy with this area just here, so I'm gonna make a few more adjustments just paint in and out along this edge here bring that line in I think just bring the back a little bit more detail along here just keeping it keeping it natural much better. If we just group our two layers, here's our before and after. Much tidier. It's before and after. So just to recap then, here is our before image, before we've done any adjustments whatsoever. And then turning all of our layers back on, here is the final image. You can see we've tidied up all of the hairlines, done some dodging and burning, bumped up the contrast, added some sharpening, all of those good things. Um, the trick with image retouching is to keep your efforts subtle. And all those little adjustments that you make, they build up cumulatively together and create an image that's you know really quite nice at the end. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button and be sure to subscribe to my channel so you can catch all my future videos, behind the scenes footage, fashion editorials, more Photoshop tutorials, all that good stuff. Thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you in the next video.